So, I would like to introduce, oh, another one. Does anybody know the conference that's coming up that Anse runs? Hackathon. That's oh. one of them. Trooper? Oh. Hey. Okay, hint, it's on the slide. Yeah, My big data. <laughs> you need a remake for A. <laughs> uh, there's a surefire way of protecting your big data from cyber. <laughs> APT. <laughs> In the cloud. <laughs> That's fine. Can you do that again? Let's try to stretch it out. Do what? Uh, yes, I do do it at a conference. I did at Marshall University, and I couldn't pass up the, the chance to tout that April. It comes up in April. It's uh, forensics, and uh, we call it information <coughs> insurance because that's what the government calls it. Um, it's at Marshall University in Huntington, West Virginia. I'm also a co-founder and a board advisor of HackerCon, here in Charleston, West Virginia. I'm an OSCP. Uh, I'll, I'll give up talking about this after it wears off in about 10 years because that was the hardest thing I've ever done in my life. I had a the process. It's, it really is a lot of fun, but you also will sweat blood. Uh, and it's expensive if you're like me and you're lazy. <laughs> and uh, I need to say, before I say this, is that nothing, nothing I have to say here this evening represents uh, the, the official views of Marshall University, its staff, its athletes, or the people who are the grass. Uh, I, am, I am an assistant professor of digital forensics and information insurance at Marshall, which is a brand new program. We're literally three weeks old. Uh, before that, I worked for lawyers, which was its own private hell, for uh, about 15 years. But I have two degrees at Marshall, and it's a nice place to go home to. And you might know us from this, which is a kind of a sad picture because this is the 1970 uh, football team, which appeared to play the plane crash. And look at this, I just screwed it up. Uh, the Paris the plane crash in 1970, which got us this wonderful movie called We Are Marshall, which got us uh, drunken hillbillies who think they're actors who came to town to he actually play in the movie. That was supposed to be really funny. But ah! So what's big data? What's big data? Way. 
in the end, all we just name becomes a blunt instrument or a sharp instrument for you. Uh, it's a sharp instrument for vendors to sell you shit. So let's look at another one. What's APT? Marketing. I'm not, you know, I'm not a professor, but I'm not used to, to uh, these things that you have to stand behind. So if I start ranting running around, it's the cocaine. I can zoom out. It's all good. <laughs> Can you zoom out? I can zoom out. Just make sure you talk loud enough to get in that microphone. Okay, that's what she said. <laughs> so APT, it's a marketing term. Okay, you ready for another? You are too smart for this talk. What's cloud? It's a marketing term. Great. Um, I forgot to sign it somehow. And, uh, and I, and I did, but I didn't put the damn slides. This is what happens when you do your slides like 10 minutes before they're due and you're talking to 14 people on Skype. So that reminds me. I forgot my, my hacker shoutouts. Hacker shoutouts, Johnny Wong, Dave Kennedy, who helped me get here to where I am today. They didn't drive me here, but you know, in the industry. <laughs> um, also to Iron Geek. I, I didn't have the security conference until I, well, I started watching uh, Adrian's video and I said, hey, that's from me, drunk geeks. <laughs> um, I hack society, which is my hacker crew. Yes, don't tell that's a hacker crew. Uh, Prime, Glitch, Bridal, who may be here in Hackett. Hackett, you here? He must be at the bar. Okay. So, what's all this marketing add up to? Phone calls! Hundreds in phone calls over a monthly period. They call me so much, I don't answer the phone. I'm afraid, I don't even answer the phone if my mother calls. I'm afraid she might have been, uh, get, she might have been hired by a marketer. I don't know. <laughs> so it's time for us to uh, hide under our desk. And uh, this is with apologies to Dave Kennedy who had a similar blog post about a year ago. It's time for us to hide under the desk for marketers. They're trying to sell us shit. Marketers, well, let's uh, back up for a second. Not just marketers. The people who sell things generally in our paradigm have good hearts. Paradigm drink. <laughs> But they also suck, generally. They're trying to sell you something you may or may not need. So, I'm going to give you the surefire way to protect your, your big data from cyber, <laughs> APT in the cloud. Damn, I want to drink. You're still too much. Uh, oh, oh, oh. Let's for a shout out, dumbass. Hey. <laughs> So people, policies, and procedures. So do you have a security awareness program? Who has a security awareness program? Woo! Is it boring? Yes, oh, yes. yes it's boring, it sucks. But you, at least you're doing something. One of the other things we need to do in this industry is turn up the, uh, the value of our security awareness program. And we need to do it when people come through the door at least once a year. Um, and you should be thinking about repeating those messages more than once a year at annual training and whenever you do new employees uh, orientation. And with all apologies to my friend Jay, security is not all don't click shit. It's a little bit more complicated than that. And I hate this laptop. So you should, users aren't stupid. <laughs> They're not stupid. Liar. We just don't tell them about it. Screwballs, come on. <laughs> really? <laughs> they, they do stupid things, but it's well, we don't tell them not to do stupid things. Um, and generally, that's you know, the reason we should have a security awareness program. Here's, a, here's an example of a security awareness message may be very popular before I join higher education. If you weren't locking your computer, I'd give you one of these nice little cards. Now there's also the point of, 
they're being nauseous. I mean, they keep giving these damn things out, but at least they get to have an awareness message. So awareness. The other thing you need to do is, is try to come up with some sort of metric. If you have a security awareness program, it's that metric trick. <laughs> That's a hammer to bed after this anyway. Because um, I'm just that excited. Um, so you have me with measuring your security awareness program. So that, um, if, and you, how do you know that it sucks? How do you know that it's good? Anybody have any ideas on how you know if it sucks or it's good? Maybe it's optional. See if you fill up the classroom. Well, that's a good one. I can talk about that. <laughs> Anybody else? I'm going to write that one down. <laughs> Repeating it, testing it. How do you test it? Trip. Besides that, your lawyer, fuck you. Does your company have too many policies? That's true too. Does your company have too many policies? Are you not getting or reviewing your policies? Are your policies Do you your policies by the bell? Do you your policies by the <laughs> That's good too. Are they enforced? You can have policies, uh, tons of policies about a lot of things. If you don't enforce them, what's the purpose of having them in the first place? Are they really stupid? So, uh, what's the penalty for not following the policy? Are you going to fire a million dollar a year salesman because he clicked the link? Yeah. Woohoo! Makes business sense, doesn't it? Wait, does that mean you're going to fire a million dollar a year? Sure. Why is this all large? Because you would be here. Sorry. Also, policies one size doesn't fit all. If you're writing a policy, policies for uh, a 10 person office, it's not going to work when you grow to 200 people. Uh, it has to fit the size of your organization. Procedures, you have procedures. You know, who orders lunch when there's a breach? Very important procedure. Uh, who the hell do you call? I mean, I've, I've had organizations call me and go, oh God, we've been hacked. We're going to call 911. <laughs> Bad idea. <laughs> Are you covered by certain uh, certain rules and regulations? Are you subject to fines? Do you have a policy if you have a breach of figuring out? I mean, I mean, do people really know? Honest to God, I'm not saying this. I'm talking to a bunch of security people. Does, does, does the average organization really understand that they're supposed to keep track of the data? And when it's breached, do they know what's missing? That's someone else's job. That's a bad policy. That's a bad procedure. Uh, what do you do when you lose a code? Do you lose a laptop? Do you have a procedure for encryption? I mean, all this stuff is basically making sure you're doing the fundamental things right, 
And this will protect you against a cyber APT in the cloud. Uh, and I'll protect your big data. No, it's not. It's monster. I'm going to go come out and kick your old ass. <laughs> so, people, policies, and procedures. Repeat it with me. People, policies, and procedures. Oh, come on. You are sleeping. Processes, procedures, the same damn thing. Synonymous. Procedure, If you get all this in place, I've lost complete control. <laughs> I'm glad that I flew all the way here in a prop plane, sitting, I'm sitting on a bill bag from Charleston, West Virginia. Um, so you do all these things, you have what? A mature mature security program. Thank you. So then you can talk to vendors. We have a mature security program. You can talk to vendors. But before, if you're not patching, there's no reason to have a pen test. This may very well be my last conference talk. Thank you. Right, right, right there, all right. You, walking forward, there you 